So I um, started with an implementation for Jenkins as a sync, and it, it's kind of fun, um, <laughs> but I do think a lot of things need to be cleared up in how it's looking right now. Uh, okay. So I guess maybe I'll show like a bit of a demonstration of the UI itself. And so this is a test UI. This I don't think is the UI that we need to go with. Um, there is a lot going on in this particular UI, but it was working for um, this system. So I had it, you know, designed this way uh, for now. Okay, so I, I felt that you know there needs to be a way to map uh, or basically sort of like table uh, the the event that's coming into what needs to happen inside of Jenkins, right? Because the, as we um, talked last time in the last meeting, um, Kara, Jeff, and I, we 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 were talking that you know building a job might not be the only event that we might want to trigger inside of Jenkins. So, so there should be a way to map or just table out what needs to happen when a certain event is received. Um, so as a starting point, I just thought, okay, I'll just maybe start with two or three events and um, a, a way to map out would be, okay, if, if so, so right now we also decided to, you know, also filter out events based on whether it's a structured format or a um, binary format. So this one's working with a binary format, but I'll move this around so that uh, we can we can ensure that uh, if it's a structured format that's coming in, we'll probably check in the um, the, the the type of the, the the media type, and then we'd go inside of um, the data of the structured format and then extract the CE type or. The, uh, you know, the, the C type or maybe the C source, but I just do feel that C type would have more information packed inside of it in, as like a cloud event uh, about that particular resource and what has happened to that resource. Um, so event topic, I have selected a build a job here and this can be like any type which a user can enter org dot uh, Jenkins CI dot start. I just had to start here because I was testing out and it's like much easier to type here and also in the test using Postman. So. Uh, and then what I also thought was maybe someone would want to have two or three different type of particular cloud events, right? So they can have org.jenkins.ci.start, org.jenkins.ci.build, uh, uh, something similar like that. And, and then basically if all of those headers or uh, there's just not, I wouldn't say header, I would say CE type or just cloud event type or cloud event source, they would build, either build a job, stop a build of a job, create a new job, whatever the user decides. So this is up to the user to figure out what do they wanna trigger inside of Jenkins? Because again, with multiple events, which are available um, and still that we, because we do not have a standardized definition for the kind of events and um, the, um, going back to the vocabulary, which is the standardized format, which we don't have right now, we might wanna have a way to map. And I thought that it's better to give users the ability to do that. So anyone who's using this plugin as Jenkins as a uh, thing, they should have the ability to configure whatever they wanna do inside of Jenkins when a particular event is received. Um, this is again using a request response system, but this is something that I want to talk more about after this sort of demonstration and also just change it to build because again it's easier. Um, and then sorry, sorry, Shruti. So when you select there a start and build, mm -hmm. that basically is saying that if you get like a, an event, a cloud event, that basically the type is a start or build, it's going to build a job. Uh, is that correct? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, just trying to understand why. So basically, you are allowing for multiple event types to do something in this case, right? Yeah. So if, for example, maybe not say Jenkins, maybe let's say tech uh, dot pipeline dot. Uh, okay, I don't really know, but let's just say starting. So this is basically a filter, is it? The for the thing. Mm -hmm. The um, like selecting the headers. Or the C type, not the headers. 
your uh, like your filtering based on the headers is the is this it like uh, um like yes based on the the c type so i uh, so i'm like filtering it based on the cloud i shouldn't put header here this was just because i was so this as i said this is like using a binary format so i just put headers because c type is going to be present in the header but it's mm -hmm. on the cloud event type um so if i was to maybe like Okay, so if something like this is received, you know, like dev dot typed on. So a person is basically going to, um, like, you know, just put this value inside of the field over here. And then as soon as, so yes, this is filtering based on this particular type. And then based on the type that's received, this is going to like give users the ability to choose what they want to do inside of Jenkins. And like, again, as I said, I don't know if this is the right way to go. Um, I, I seriously, I just thought, okay, let's just go like whatever <laughs> I feel like could be an implementation. Um, so that's why I, I sort of debate based it on um, cloud event type. But going back to the headers, I think it just makes the most sense. Or maybe we can have source, but I just feel like type just makes more sense on what was done. Um, and I you know have maybe like have arbitrary events here, which someone would like to trigger. And I had the event topic here because I just thought this can be something when you're talking about a request response system or just like an HTTP um, REST based, uh, like a request response sync, uh, it, it, can, it can be a way to think of, okay, here's a topic that Jenkins is sort of subscribing to and whenever this particular thing is going to happen, Jenkins basically does a particular or triggers a particular action. Um, I think that, that makes sense. I think that makes sense in general, like filtering the type of the event, then to trigger an action, then you will need to figure it out how to extract which job to trigger, right? Yeah, so- That's the second part, okay. Okay, yeah. okay, now yeah. I okay. <laughs> Thanks, Mauricio, I'm really sorry if I wasn't clear. <laughs> no worries, no worries, that's good. Um. So yeah, so maybe I'll delete this to keep the, the, the UI cleaner and I'll also just have start here. Just, but in your head, just think of this as start C, like the cloud event type start. Uh, <laughs> just trying to keep it clearer so everything kind of, you know, is cleaner to look at. And then I have this configure additional properties. Um, and I did not know what better place to put this at, but what I ideally wanted to do was as soon like as the topic received would be build job, um, something like an optional block of selecting an existing project would come up. So building a job or stopping build up a job require select existing project. So I did try running a validation on um, on this particular like drop down, and then also on so this is a boolean field so I did try running a validation but that did not work so I, I, I then converted into sort of like a string it's then it started working so I was like okay maybe this only is going to work for, for, for like a like a string but this is not going to work here again that's something that we can figure out moving forward but for now if a person, you know, and all the logic of what happens when a person basically does not choose job, that's just, that, that won't really affect the, the whole like experience for the user itself. Um, so okay, building, building a job and I'm going to select an existing project. Um, oh, already kind of selected, so I'm going to delete this. Or wait, where did I go? <laughs> okay, I'm really sorry, that wasn't uh, It also jumps for some weird reason, and I don't know why it's uh, like the UI jumps, but so. Oh my God, what? Well, um, I'm sorry, um, Marisha? No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't worry too much about the demos. I mean, as soon as uh, we see kind of like the, that the fields and the data that it's being collected is correct, you know, demos tends to fail all the time. <laughs> 
Um, so I have two jobs right now. I have a test job and I have fail job. So this is basically giving the user to enter the job they want. And I'm just going to select two jobs, um, even though it's, it's meant to fail, but every time a C type of start will be received at, um, at the, the end point that I have given for this particular, um, like this plugin for the sync. Every time this particular C type will be received, here in the header, it's going to build a job and it's going to build a test job and the fail job. I can also configure, I also thought maybe users won't want to do more of, you know, triggering more action. So maybe they want to have stop build of the job, but they want to have a different type here. So maybe this is org.tecton.pipeline. .stop. So it's something like this. And for this, they're also going to select an existing project. Which is when you select fail um, or something similar. So again, you know, the, the UI, I need to work on this. Like I'm going to need help on this because this just looks so confused. So if I'm, okay, I'm going to, um, you know, it's a lot of like repeatables and like I had to put some of this into describable into two different describables, one for this this whole um, block and one for this block right here. Um, and then again, like if someone has to do another one of this whole event block of, you know, selecting a type and then selecting an action, it's a, it, it can be really long. Uh, can be a little, you know, I don't, I don't think it looks really clear because we already have this um, Jenkins as a sync, like Jenkins as a source implementation. And I was looking a way to break this into Jenkins as a source and Jenkins as a sync, but still remain within cloud plug, um, cloud events plugin, you know, maybe like a subheader um, or a line break. So I'm, I wasn't able to find it yet but I'm working on at least sort of like breaking this apart between this is Jenkins as a source and all starting configure Jenkins as a sync is Jenkins as a sync. Anyway. Yeah. Logically, logically, I would say that they are separated, right? Because you can configure one without the other. Mm -hmm. So maybe even kind of like having two separate screens, at least for me, it, it will make sense. Mm -hmm. And on the sync side, I wonder why did you choose to put like the event topic, which is the action that you're going to trigger at the beginning. I think that that's just, it might be just a, kind of like a, the way that I think about this, but I would usually put the filter first in the idea, like the idea of saying when this happens, right? Like when this event happened, mm -hmm. I want to then trigger this thing against this kind of like this job in particular, right? Mm -hmm. So I would definitely put closer like the event topic, the action, mm -hmm and the selected project just to make sure that they are close because that's kind of like how I think that people will just go and configure these things. It's just kind of like a mental flow that they will follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, think, that's, sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 I think that that's, that's, that's just a kind of like a minor detail on how things are arranged. And the next thing that you will need to think about is a way to define for example, if you want to trigger a job, you can trigger it by name, right? So for example, mm -hmm. there you are just saying, uh, just run the test and the fail job, that's fine. But when you want to cancel a job, you will probably need to do it by ID, not by name, right? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah I think Because, that's... because mm -hmm. you can have multiple instances of test running, right? Mm -hmm. You can have mm -hmm. multiple test jobs running and you need to decide which one do you want to stop you cannot stop all the jobs. Yeah, and there are certain points in which you might have to give certain parameters based on the sync mm -hmm. that you have. So exactly. you, you should be able to also pull from the sync and do that. Like we haven't reached that point where we are parsing the body for certain uh, stuff, but um, maybe something to keep in mind. So mm -hmm. you, should, you should probably look at giving like, you know, test number, as in like the build number instead of the uh, project name. Hmm. Uh, yes, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, but like, I'm thinking is like, is there a way that uh, we can, you know, like, because I think 
if if we'd, we'd have to give a number, wouldn't like a user would have to look it up first and then, so what the, what like the stop build of a job does right now is basically, so if there's, you know, the, um, if I have this test or fail and if it's in the queue, any, you know, any job is this, if a test is in the queue or if the fail is in the queue, um, it's just going to cancel the, the last instance of what's in the queue. And I think that's really troubling. Um, but uh, like if we are uh, giving users the, okay, you go and enter the, the field for the, maybe like the ID or something. I'm just thinking how maybe difficult would it be for a user to figure out what exactly do I want to cancel? That's like, does that make sense? Yeah, I think build number probably is like not a great idea now that I think about it. Mm, but um, is there a way to kind of annotate jobs uh, so that, you know, the latest jobs of a certain kind would get uh, stopped in that case? Um, I, I think like that's something that I need to look into, but I like, again, with like stopping the build of a job, that was, that was one thing because for example, if a person has, they already have a build running, for example, they have a fail job running. And if they have five or fail jobs in the queue, um, and there's this certain one with um the, that, that was maybe triggered from like that was triggered automatically from um, like some external system let's say that that was that's the the queue number three out of the five jobs which were in the queue and um, this is fail job which i'm talking of and this particular fail job number three maybe has some additional you know like particular um let's say scripts or maybe particular diff other uh, changes. So I'm just thinking maybe we can, like one way can be to have this information passed down uh, from, from the event body itself. So like the event body is like, okay, this particular job was a like maybe like Tecton. So this particular pipeline was starting this particular pipeline is using um, this, 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 like maybe like four different scripts. Um, and each script is basically like each script maybe has an ID, right? So whenever we're passing that and we're like, okay, we want this particular script with ID number three is present in fail job number three. I don't know if, if I, I don't know how feasible that is because, you know, that's again, first it's, kind of like tidally coupling things. And the second is it's not always guaranteed that we will receive the event data that necessarily is going to link the particular job that's in the queue that we want to cancel with um, with just like the job. So if someone says, because as I said right now, this just cancels the last job in the queue. So if there are five in the queue, this is going to cancel the fifth one in the queue. And the other ones are going to run. So that's a very interesting um, question to think about. And like something that I wanted to also mention and talk about was how can we um, exactly figure out which, which job would need to be canceled out of the multiple which are present in the, maybe in the queue or, um, or maybe already executing. Yeah, it really depends on the use case, but for some integration purposes, you might have been, you might be able to get that ID from the body, right? I mean, I guess that, that should be kind of like the approach. If you get the ID in the body, you should try to parse and get it and try to just stop that job. If not, you will just execute that default behavior of stopping the, the latest one or something like that. Because if not, it's going to be very tricky to figure out which one to stop. And you always be, will end up like stopping the latest, which might be started by some other action, right? It might be just started mm -hmm. manually by someone else or by another event or, or, or whatever it's happening in the, in, the, in the ecosystem in that case. So maybe having kind of like these two paths, one trying to read kind of like an ID uh, 
from the body. And if it's not there, then just stopping the, the last might be good enough for now. Yeah, that's a, um, the, yeah I think that's a good way to implement it. And um, again, <laughs> I think it's just giving, you, just giving users the ability to sort of control how they might want to stop the build of a job. Um, uh, and so another thing that uh, Marisha mentioned was the event topic. I I put it here to start because I thought when you know there are multiple C uh, like cloud event types that someone has added here, and when event topic was at bottom of all of this, it sort of looked confusing. But it definitely makes the most sense when a person first can figure if I want to if I receive um, cloud type of this type, this type, and this type, I want to trigger this action. So rather than want to trigger this action in Jenkins if I receive so and so types. So um, do you think that it would be okay if a person has maybe like five or three or however many um, cloud event types configured here and then have the event topic beneath it? I think so. Yeah, I would. I would definitely add the filter first. Not hundred percent sure of having multiple event types that will make it more difficult for you to parse right like if you need to parse the body you will need to check the type first and then decide how to parse it because different kind of like events might come with different bodies right mm -hmm. so but yeah i think that if you want to leave that option of, of selecting multiple filters i i wouldn't be against that uh but yeah i would just put the filter first then the topic then the action and then the project where it's going to execute basically mm -hmm. Um, okay. Also, maybe it makes sense to explore uh, the C. So uh, adding like filtering of like different yeah. headers itself. Uh, I mean the okay. I'm I'm just gonna call the main parts the headers. Yeah. But uh, maybe it uh, makes sense to you know figure out uh, adding if the adding other headers will also help. Because I feel. Uh, it would definitely give more uh, flexibility mm. because the type can be the same of, from time to time. But uh, you no, know, you would like to parse also on like the subject or like the source from which it is coming in. Mm. And uh, with things like the source, I think it uh, hmm, this is interesting. The C source in Tecton should ideally give, uh, the, Maurice, do you think it should give the server endpoint as well? The C source? The C source, uh, what do you mean? When you when we are sending when we are sending cloud events or when we are consuming? Yeah, like if Tecton is sending cloud events, should the C source contain the uh, endpoint, like Kubernetes endpoint or something? Uh, sometimes that's needed, sometimes that's not. Usually that's kind of like the service that it's emitting that, right? Yeah. So in this case, that that event is being emitted by a task run that it's called curl run, right? That's the only thing that it's saying. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter where it was generated. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, I don't think that that will be needed of who is emitting it, but okay. it can. And that can be part of the that can be part of the body of the event as well, which might yeah, be something that Tecton is doing. I don't know. Yeah, but the thing in, with task runs is the name keeps changing. So yeah. maybe maybe we can give a generic name in the beginning, and the uh, extension which is added can be you know it could be kind of like grep at that point. Um, like, mm -hmm. Just checking for sub uh, subtext. Yeah, that can be an option, yes. I do um, not have um, any strong feelings about that. So are we saying that having like CE type and CE source, um, maybe like function together, is like, is that 
So, so, so just as a way to maybe add more uh, metadata and then give more ability to Jenkins to kind of figure out what to do, that it might be a better option to have C type and C source. Yeah, like users should be able to, you know, parse with different things as well. Okay. Not just C type. Yeah, I yeah, I think like I'm thinking that, you know, if because again, like I just kept one of those because like C source and C type fully, like wholly do not convey all of the information. So we will, if we are like looking through the body, if we have to parse through the body, we will have to parse through the body, even if we have the C source and C type present. Um, because yes, it might be able to say that it's like this particular task run or it was um, this particular type with, of this, of like the cloud event that's received, but it, it does not fully contain the information that might be needed, like the additional information. So we will eventually have to go into parsing the body. So I'm just thinking if, you know, the would be like, okay, let me enter the type. Okay, and then let me also enter the subject. Um, because like, again, as I said, we might have to parse the body and get that information anyway. Uh, and we, at, at some point, we will definitely have to uh, pass the body and get information from there. Uh, but but the question is, uh, like, how, uh, like, the use, should the user be able to pass any field for checking and then, you know, triggering the Jenkins job? So, mm -hmm. if, right now, you've only given C type, right? So, maybe, maybe it should be like... Uh, you, know, you should the user should be able to uh, you know configure which uh, which key they want to uh, check in in the request that is coming so sorry mm -hmm. in the cloud event that is coming in so here as you said like add c type uh, maybe it could be something like you know add uh, um, add filter so uh, and then in the filter, you can give like which key and what value are you looking for in that key. So that is that is a more flexible way of doing things. I feel, and uh, in and when you're giving the value, you can the user user could probably give like a regex or something which would match uh, certain elements in the uh, value of that key. So whether it be like C type, C subject, anything or like something that is part of the cloud event data itself. I think uh, that that would be something that would be a lot more flexible and it would definitely like allow us to do things like, you know, pro probably like pass parameters to like from Tekton to like Jenkins. So if Tekton results are of like, we get certain Tekton results and we would like to, you know, pass those Tekton results to the, uh, as parameters to the uh, existing job. So we would like to do things like that. So at some point, so mm -hmm. just just creating that flexibility is quite important in this case. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think um, that makes sense. And so uh, there are two types of uh, cloud events which can be received inside of Jenkins. One is this binary structure or like no. binary format. Another is the structured format where everything will be present inside of um, what we can say the event body. Mm -hmm. uh, so over, oh, should a user also maybe enter a field about whether this is, you know, a structured or JSON format, or should that be done inside of this plugin? Because um, yeah. if like we shouldn't make the user uh, choose it, we should just uh, do it by ourselves. So if it is binary or structured format, the user shouldn't have to uh, learn what binary or structured format is mm -hmm. because we know that and we are abstracting that for the user. 
so mm-hmm. uh, we should just take whatever events come in in the back end uh, we should check if it is binary or structured and then based on that we carry out things like the user doesn't need to know that for, for sure mm-hmm. yeah that's a very good point um yeah i'm just thinking of sort of the the validations which would be needed in in the ui itself um because as i said like what i wanted to do was if if the topic is build a job then automatically like give user the ability to enter um an existing existing project but it was really hard to figure out how to do that so i'm just thinking um how can we sort of like like give users the ability to um like enter fields depending on what they have selected so if they uh i don't know. i'm thinking i don't know i'm just thinking out loud so we are saying that we might want the type or like how give users the ability to enter one or however many fields to look for as a filter um i'm just thinking of, of like how can we give user or like how can that be sort of automated inside of you um but but i think like what you guys have said uh those are very good points and i'm going to iterate on making those um and like changing to you know just having or giving users the ability to decide what can be the filter here so we can for, for the filtering bit i think we can use uh, i don't know if there's a java version of it but there is uh, something called common expression language which uh, tecton uses to filter stuff so it uh, allows us to like match expressions different kind of expressions and you know do a lot of different things with the incoming data so just mm-hmm. match the key and the uh, whatever operator you want to use and then the values so kind of doing things like that and uh, but so you could probably check that out let me put that here yeah um like in checking is more maybe sort of checking in the ui so that flow mm-hmm. but it's it's not going to make sense now what i'm saying i think maybe when i start again that iteration um it, it might make more sense um so for okay let's see. is to receive request and so this is the the building the checking and this is what sort of like doing the whole um you know just like matching if this is the header then do this and stuff um but but <laughs> Okay, I'm not making sense at all right now. It's okay. We will move no, away. No, you are making sense. You are making sense. Just, just, uh, just say. Um, no, just saying like the so. So, if a person selected, for example, if they selected, uh, stop build of a job, right? Yeah. And the field, which is event topic inside of like our jelly files and inside of her Java class, if this per Or, um like event topic is stop build of a job then trigger wait just let me delete this then automatically like trigger this particular field so as soon as a person selected stop build of a job because this is already like if the person is wanting to stop build of a job it must be an existing job so automatically trigger this field uh like like pop up or maybe like automatically pop up or um 
figure by itself. So it only really happens when I save it. So if I have any logic, like if the event topic is just our build of a job, then select existing project should be true. And all of that really happens when it's being saved and which makes sense, obviously. Um, but I'm just thinking when we are adding more of UI, how to prevent or you know, how to prevent putting a lot of information that users would not have to enter. For like select existing project or configure new project, they mm -hmm. not need be here, but they are only because there's no other way that I could figure out how to how to put this select existing project. So maybe a person wants to build a job, but they do not look at select existing field at all and they do not understand what to do, where to go. So I'm just thinking of automating each step. And I looked into like scripts inside of Jelly. I looked into other, uh, you know, like obviously the, the, the condition programming inside of Jelly, but that everything works when it's saved. So I went with the optional blog because then the users would not see this whole like text field when they do not have to enter it. You know, like configure new project, build, a building a job does not require this field for configuring new projects, so that's why it's unselected. So user does not see this additional UI bit. Uh, so that's what I'm thinking when we have a lot of, you know, adding keys and values and also adding uh, maybe just, you know, about uh, like additional, I don't know, like metadata or any, or any of that stuff. How to reduce or be minimalistic in terms of the UI, so so user is not confused I, about what do yeah. they need. Um, <laughs> I, I do I do get your question, but uh, so like a nice way to think about UI for the Jenkins configuration would to actually just get a pen and paper and try to write what is the most simple YAML I could write for uh, the configuration. So that's that's how 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 I would think about it. And uh, why I'm saying that is because uh, I remember, I, I think it was Jeff who said that probably we should have our own dashboard uh, in for configuring cloud events. And I kind of agree with that because from the looks of this, it feels like it will scale to such a level to uh, mm -hmm. that it will take over the entire global plugin configuration. Like 90%, it is possible that if uh, people are doing a lot of cloud event filtering kind of stuff to, uh, you know, uh, trigger their jobs, there might come a point where it would like 90% of this would become 90% of global plugin configuration would become just cloud events. So mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, it, it makes sense to invest some time in, you know, figuring a UI for that. And I'm also thinking, would it be, uh, would it make sense for now to kind of uh, so now that we have an idea, like what, you know, the internals look like that, uh, okay, we get a cloud event, we, you know, parse it, and then we kind of, uh, on, based on that, uh, if the parse, parsing stuff comes correctly, then after that, we, we use some of it as parameters and the rest of it as like, you know, which job probably could get triggered. Like we, we can use this stuff and then put it into Jenkins job, trigger the Jenkins job. And you know, that will be like our life cycle, right? But I think it's at this point in our project, it is probably a good idea to take a step back and like uh, kind of see how this works out all in YAML. Because uh, at some point in time, we would have to do that. So uh, right now we are focusing completely on the, uh, what do you call it? The working, it's the business logic of all of this stuff, but I think it is it, it is a good time to kind of take a step back and you know figure out what configuration would be like you know best sort of configuration for this. So you've done a great job till now, Shruti, and I think the next step probably like this week we what we can do is kind of figure figure out uh, what mm, you know configuration looks like for this. Um, yeah, I, so I was just say I, I I like that because the the UI um, needs to support what we want it to do, right? So may, maybe focusing on the UI 
before we're sure we have that nailed down as isn't, isn't the most productive. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense. <laughs> and like the config, like configuring, just getting information from the UI, um, thing like that takes more time than just configuring the plugin. Um, and then when we say the config part and put it in, or like it sort of abstracting away this whole, you know, the, how, how do we get this information? Um, like what exactly, what exactly do we mean like in terms of putting it into a YAML file? Um, is it for config as a code, but, or, or is it like completely different just, just for working on the functioning logic of the plugin rather than working on the so, Maybe. so you know the the one thing about that is that we can double it as config as code at some point. But if like it just happens to be a good exercise to you know just uh, kind of put things down in YAML sometimes because YAML is simple. It's got arrays, it's mm -hmm. got key value pairs, and that's it. And uh, you know when you think in terms of these things, you will come up with a UI that is simple enough, yet useful enough, and it has like enough, enough repeat, repeatable pieces that the user can, you know, easily think in. So it's pro probably like this week, what we can do is we can uh, like figure out like what that would look like. And like just under cloud events, so you, got like this entire big cloud event thing. Mm -hmm. And then under that, probably you've got like, I'm, I'm thinking YAML right now. So you've got like the cloud events. Okay, cloud events colon, I go down, uh, double space, then I'll write syncs, then colon, then I'll go down and I'll start a list over there, right? I'll start a list, I'll put a dash, I'll say uh, like name, yeah. So what is, the name of the sync and then something like that. So configuring Jenkins as a sync, do I want multiple syncs here or like just one sync? Mm -hmm. So I, that's how, how I figure it out. So to start off, we basically just uh, convert this stuff that we've done right now to the YAML and see how well that works. And we can make changes there. And as we are making changes there, we, are we can come back here and you know, tweak this to fit fit the YAML and kind of kind of go back and forth on on that why i'm saying to like do this is because it is it it would make ui uh, at some point like simple enough and like quite efficient mm -hmm. for the user to use. yeah i think that's a really uh great idea <laughs> and it honestly sounds fun um, or like funner than, you know, like just doing a lot of this. Um, I, like, I really don't know what you're going through right now, dealing with all of this jelly, because I know it's not easy to figure <laughs> this out. And uh, it's it's not even Java, it's just XML of some sort. Um, maybe doing this exercise could also, you know, take you out of this rut of jelly that you probably have been, you know, trying to figure all this out. I don't take just it will help help you clear your mind a lot about these things and obviously we can at some point come back to jelly but mm -hmm. uh, jeff correct me if i'm wrong but uh, a lot of configuration these days for jenkins is better done through configuration as code and with just just for the fact that it's simple and you know i can look at it and okay okay this is what it's doing so it's it's just that um, so I, I, I mean, I, I think that, that that is the best way to configure it. And I mean, I, I don't think mo, 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 like, like any development tools, you know, there that that's you often configure them with with YAML or JSON or something. Um, I, I think that most plugins, though, do have to have some UI as well. Um, but the other thing is, if we're talking about some sort of a, a standalone UI that that's not part of the the system configuration settings. I don't think that has to be in Jelly. I think it 
can can use HTML and, and JavaScript and stuff. So that might be another reason to kind of defocus the, the, the Jelly stuff. Um, but, oh. but 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 oh. de definitely any any new plugin needs to support configuration as as code I, I believe um, I mean it's not a hard requirement but it but it really should. Jeff, are you saying that we can we can use this HTTP and J JavaScript for uh, the front end bits? So you you can um, yes you you, you can. And and but I, I think that if if um if, if you, we have a standalone UI where uh, where it's not you know not part of an existing page like this it's it's even easier. You can you can you can do it on the system con on, on the system configuration page, but it's it's kind of hard to figure out how to how how to um, plug it in. But if it's a standalone thing that's totally separate, then I think that um, we can use anything we want. It's basically pulls up a web app and. A web app, and then you, um, you know, there's like Java bindings and stuff. Right. Any chance do you have like examples for this? So, like any plugin which might already use this kind of, uh, you know, standalone. So, um, well, I so I'm I'm not sure what is going on with the Jenkins UI right now. Um, at one point. They they were going to use React and and I actually mentored a project that that was was using React, um, but he it it worked well but um, I think he there, there's some issues with compatibility because there's like which version of React is Jenkins using um, and there, there's even I I think um, I had him do a, a React um, like like a React sample to to like like a kind of a, a Kickstarter thing. But but we so so my hesitation is we we did that at the time that the that Blue Ocean was going to be the UI and it was React based and I, I mm -hmm. believe that Blue Ocean's not being pushed forward and and I'm not plugged into what's going on with the UI so I, I don't know if they're using a different framework now. Well, we don't have to use so. Uh, um, React, I feel. No. But. It would be just like simple JavaScript and, you know, just simple HTML. Yeah, I, I believe that's probably the case. Um, so so one like really old and, and sort of crusty example is the thin black thin backup plugin. So it, it has like a separate web applet and I don't believe it uses Jelly. The thin, the thin backup plugin? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, um, I had logged into the, like the thin backup plugin and also a couple other plugins. So some of them are using Ruby. Some of them have like this scripting section inside of Jelly, uh, which is doing, you know, a lot of maybe works with displaying the um, the list or doing the work with what happens when something is submitted. But again, yes, that was not inside of global config. So the like, global config works very, I think like differently, but also very attached with how Jenkins saves and from like how um, Jelly saves information inside of global configuration. And that's why scripting here was not working. I did try using that, uh, but if yes, I, maybe the next option is to actually move out of global configuration. Um, and I did try um, another like the, a clone that I have and tried using like extending and working with management link, but I wasn't sure if this is working, so I stuck with. Um, global config, but uh, you guys are totally right on how this is becoming really um, a hefty task for users or just to, you know, think of and develop. So I think it's really the time to move away from global configuration and think of other ways to achieve the same effect and reduce this um, overhead of just designing. 
so I, I was wrong. The, the thin backup does does use Jelly for the UI, but it, it doesn't. Um, it, it has it, it's like like separate configuration applet. So it's not, it's not part of this global um, config. So I mean, it, it solves uh, one one of my suggestions, which is to move this into a separate separate web app. Yeah, because um, yeah, the scripting with Jelly, I I looked at like I look at a lot of plugins <laughs> just to figure you know this repeatables, the additional properties, and the um, auto complete. So I did find a good amount which were using like um, JavaScript scripts inside of Jelly, and I was like, huh, this is really cool. And then I did try implementing it inside of global configuration, but it it wasn't working. And at that time I had some things down. So I was like, okay, let's just first see if this sort of system of, you know, having a filter and then um, uh, having the particular, like a, an event that a user would like to trigger if this works or not. But if you're sure that this kind of a sync of, you know, having a filter, um, having or giving users the ability to enter an event topic, if this works, then, I'm going to move away and spend my time in um, designing it in the simpler terms with YAML. And um, Configure's code is added to this plugin and it does work, I, ch I checked it. But again, you know, uh, someone might not look into that and someone might come to this plugin. So I, I don't really know how, I didn't know how to simplify it, but I do know now. Uh, and just, yes, moving away from, moving away from this. So I, I sent a, a link to the the, the GSOC um, pro project that that I worked on um, it ha that has the React based UI. Uh, unfortunately, it's still a pull request because um, after the project was over, um, I didn't have the student merge it, which is is my bad. And um, when when I tried testing it, I, I found some bugs, and and so I fixed some of them, and it still has one. But um, there, that's an example of. Of something that that uses that has a, a separate, um, or or that, that uses something other than Jelly for its UI. And and again, I, I'm not necessarily advocating for React, but it just shows it can be done. Thanks, Jeff. Yes, that um, that's going to be really helpful. And even if we're not using maybe just like React, we can look into just plain JavaScript. And if anything that that works <laughs> and is better than this, I think. The, the README config, it actually looks really cool and complex. It, like complex for, um, you know, we, are, we can get a lot of information, but not to actually configure complex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what do you plan on uh, doing uh, doing for your next task? Uh, so, the first thing is looking into ways that this can be moved out of global configuration, um, and how the whole the jelly itself can be simplified um, with uh, maybe either using scripting or with going with. Um, JavaScript or a framework, React, whatever works. And also, as you said, I think simplifying it and in, in thinking of it in terms of YAML, uh, I'm sort of visualizing it in my head right now and that looks really awesome and, and something that can really help figure out stuff on how it can also be presented in the UI, so that. Um, and then implementing the the changes for the, just the filtering part that it, it, it works in a more uh, sort of open and agnostic manner. I think that those are the next few big tasks. Um, have you gotten a chance to look at other like have you gotten a chance to run uh, cloud events with? Tecton by any chance? No, I haven't like run them. I've just been reading their docs. Mm -hmm. 
and i'm guessing you are currently um, working with this local locally right were you able to run this on kubernetes um no i was actually thinking about this and i was like um i should i should also try running that um yes i'm running this locally on my system um but that's a good that's a good suggestion i would suggest checking out the uh, sock i um sock i repo by uh, new scott i think so that's his uh, github name um i'm checking out the ui for that it's it's a uh, it's just very simple and um, there are there are a few things that that would be nice to have which are quite agnostic and you know that gives us like something to work with because it's made by someone working in knative and um we have a good idea of how to uh, parse this cloudy cloud event stuff so i think that's a good way to uh, that that's a thing that you could do but um i would like i would i would like you to just take a probably like a step back this week and uh, kind of uh, instead of working on anything new or like improving something just kind of do a good uh, uh in like a review of different things and like take inventory uh of you know how cloud events are being used across and how mm-hmm. things are being passed because i think at this point in our project it's it's it is like possible to kind of get off track maybe a little bit or like you know just not off track but like you know get a little lost which uh, mm-hmm. which kind of which can be detrimental and uh, like we we start solving problems that don't exist or like we start extending things like which are like kind of out of scope in a way so i think this week would be nice if, uh, to like just take a step back just look at stuff what other people have done and uh, maybe next week we can come and then you know discuss these things and like and start with a new perspective or at least a a better perspective yes that's yes those are very good um suggestions and honestly uh like good ideas for the work that needs to be done and also um we, we are you know um two minutes going beyond the meeting time yeah. um but i really appreciate the suggestions um and all the help for you know like the the plugin and the ui and all of that stuff um and there was one more thing but i think we the, this is the more prominent thing and just the sync implementation um again when we were talking about uh it the next week i think we can talk about that as well there uh, yes well, on we'll be looking at you know different um implementations for cloud events and also maybe just just event agnostic systems and see how they're implementing stuff that sounds good probably i have a feeling we should probably do another uh, meeting but i'll i'll just stop uh, ping you ping you in person or like on the chat and if if everyone is available we could probably do another meeting yeah that sounds good thank you sounds very good excellent discussion today and thank you for your demo Ashruti. Great. So I think we can wrap up and thank you all for being here. And we will see you next week. Sound good? Hey. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.